Hello, my name is Stefan Grandpre, and this video is a tutorial that will show you how to use Shadow Puppet EDU. When you open Shadow Puppet, uh, you will see the button that prompts you to create a new project. The first thing you need to do is choose what photos or videos will go into your project. The menu on the left has several choices of places you can look for pictures or videos to add to your project. Flickr Creative Commons and Wikimedia Commons are great places to begin searching for images. So when I go in, I will type in my keyword, which will be rugby for my project, and I will begin to search. It looks like my search came up with many options and I can scroll around and look for an image I might be interested in. If I find one, I can simply tap on it, and you'll see that it will become blue with a number, and I'll see my total number of images here. If I'm curious about a picture but not sure, I can click in the corner, and it will give me a larger version of the image, and I can also scroll through like this. You can see I've already selected this image, and maybe I'll take this one as well. So I'll tap on it, and when I'm finished, I'll go back. One of the benefits of using Flickr Creative Commons or Wikimedia Commons to search for my images is that all the images that come up are available for public use, so I do not need to be concerned about copyright infringement as long as I cite my sources at the end. And luckily, there is a setting for that that I will show you later. You'll see on the left that there are some other educational sources that I can use to search. And if I switch over to one of them, it will keep my search term. So when I click on Library of Congress, I see some other rugby-related search terms. So if I tap on this image here in the corner, I see, okay, I might want to use some of this for my picture. So or for my project. So I'll select that and then go back and you'll see I now have three images selected. Another option that's available but I won't use in my project is backgrounds. So if you tap on backgrounds you're going to see several different styles of backgrounds that you could use and you could draw or explain or type over those backgrounds. I also have access to map search or famous landmarks. So because I'm doing my project on rugby, I'm going to tap map search. And when I searched rugby, uh, it looks like it came up with some town. So I'm going to change because I know that rugby originated in England. So if I want my viewers to see this, I can change to a satellite image. And I want my viewers to know about where England is. So I'm going to pinch the screen to zoom back out and get the United States in the picture as well. So now I'll be able to show my viewers that England is here in comparison with where we are in the United States. To make sure that this image gets put into my project, I want to click the camera icon and there it goes. Lastly, I want to make sure to get some items from my camera roll. So videos and pictures are available from my camera roll. When I select a video I want to use, I can just tap on it, and you'll see I will be able to preview the video to see what it looks like. And I can also use the tool here to shorten the edges of the video if there are parts of it I don't want in, and then I can preview what will be entered. I want a little more off of that. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. I can also choose to include audio from the video or not. Because I'll be doing a voiceover, I want to turn that off so it isn't part of my video, and I will add it. I can choose another video to select to put in. Test it. And I'm okay with that clip, so I'm going to leave it just as is, except I will again turn off the audio and tap add. All right, I have six images in my video and I've actually changed my mind. I do want to add in a background slide for my title 
and I think I'll use this one right here. So I'll tap that, and it's added in. Now that I have all of the images I want in my video, I can tap here to change the order of them. I see all seven, and I can, I know I want this to be my title slide, so I'm going to tap and hold on it, and now I can drag it over, and now that is number one. And now I can readjust where I want each of my pictures to go in the order I want them to go in. All right, there we go. Once I'm ready, I can tap next. On the recording screen, I have a few options. At the top, you can see it says My Puppet, and if I tap on the edit symbol there, I can change the title of my project. I'll just call it Rugby Video. You'll see, oh, let's see, done. I can also tap to zoom in on the center of my image. I can also use two fingers to scroll in on different parts of the image. When I tap on this tool right here, I'm able to add text. And I want to type just a short message because there isn't a lot of space. So, And you can see that right now, when I return, it disappeared because it has it's set to fade in, fade out. So I can change to what I want. I also see that my word is cut off. So because my word was cut off, I do want to adjust the size, which I can do right here with this icon. There we go. Now that fits nicely. I can change where on the screen my text goes down in the corner, and every time I tap on this icon, it moves to a different place. But I want it right in the middle. You might not be able to see in the video, but there's a watermark here where I can choose the color of text. And just by tapping on it, it scrolls through my different color choices. I think on the black background, white shows up best. I can also change my font to something that matches just what I want. When I'm finished, Check mark. Let's move on. If I tap the music icon right here, I can choose to add some background music from my iTunes library or background music that is, comes with the app. And if I tap on one of these, like Americana, I can hear a sample. I can stop the sample by hitting stop and This one's nice and calm, and I like blues, blues music, so I think I'll use this one. So I'm going to click Use. Now I can choose, do I want just music in the background, or will I also be recording my voice? And I want to also record my voice, so I'll choose that. I'm finally ready to start recording my project, so I can use this button to begin recording my voice. If I want to mute my voice at any time, I can use this button. So I'll begin recording. This video is a quick introduction to rugby. You can see that I was able to pause my recording by tapping again. And now I can tap here to go to my next slide and continue recording. This time I'm going to pinch my picture to zoom in. Rugby was first played in England. I didn't really like how that went, so I'm going to click Undo. And now it will ask if I want to redo this page. So this will erase anything I've recorded while on this page. So I'm going to tap OK. You'll see I'm back to five seconds. And this time when I record, after when I start recording, a magic wand icon will start up here. And I can select a tool to use as a pointer on the screen. And I'm going to try that instead. Rugby was first played in England, all the way over here across the ocean. 
That was much better. Now I can move on and quickly narrate my other slides. So I'll tap to the next slide. I want to zoom in on this picture before I start recording. Rugby was played a long time ago, even in the 1800s. All right, next slide. Ah, this is one of my videos. When I start recording, the video will begin to play. In rugby, players tackle each other. At that point, either team can gain possession of the ball. Rugby also has something called a scrum, which is kind of like a face-off in hockey. You can see what I did there. I continued recording as I went from one slide to the next, so you don't need to stop in between slides. When the ball goes out of bounds during play, one team throws it back in to continue the game. Now that I'm finished recording, I can tap Save, and it will take a moment. Once my progress is saved, I can tap on the play button to preview what I've made. This video is a quick introduction to rugby. Once I'm done watching my preview, I can go back and I have several choices for publishing it. Seesaw is a program directly connected to Shadow Puppet EDU where students can create an educational portfolio with the projects that they create. They can also view each other's pro projects. It is easy to upload to YouTube from here. You can also email a link to someone else, copy the link to paste somewhere, and more. In more, you're probably familiar with some of these, and it even gives some extra options of what to open in. I will choose to put my video into Google Drive. Once I'm here and I've got the account that I want, I can tap Upload and that process will begin. After it's done, it will take a little bit of time before my Google Drive is able to play the video, but then I'll be able to share the link and others will see my work. If I'm not pleased with my video, I can go back and I can choose to either continue where I left off or erase and start over. Or I can just say that I'm done. That'll bring me back to my main screen where I can still access this project. Before you start trying this tool, I just want to draw your attention to a couple things in the settings menu including the ability to turn on or off save to camera roll the ability to not autoplay videos when you start recording. And one thing that I find very important is show image credits. When you have that on, it will credit all of the images that you pulled from public sources uh, so that you are correctly citing your sources. All right. Go ahead, get started, and enjoy.